SwiftUI's image view works great with images that are inside your app bundle. But if you want to load an image from a remote server like the internet, then you've got to use a different type of view called async image. These are made with a URL rather than a simple image file name, but SwiftUI takes care of everything else for you. It downloads the data, it caches it locally, and even updates the UI's view to display the image when it's ready. So, the simplest image we can create looks like this. There's an async image with a URL being URL string HTTPS comma slash slash hws.dev slash img slash logo dot ping like that. I'll go ahead and run the code back in the simulator so you can see it now. And you should see that appears. And I made this picture be 1200 points high, which is much less than our screen. This screen is massive in terms of actual pixel count. And it's been displayed big, like way bigger than it should be. And this gets to one of the fundamental problems of using async image, which is that SwiftUI knows nothing about our image until our codes actually run and the image is actually downloaded. And so it can't give it an appropriate size ahead of time. It doesn't know what size it's going to be until it finally is downloaded. Now, if I were to include that picture inside my asset bundle catalog directly, I would call it like logo at 3x.ping, 1200 high, and then make a 2x version that was 800 high, because it's a lower resolution thing, and SwiftUI would take care of loading the 3x or the 2x, depending on which device is being used, and it also makes sure it looked sharp at all screen resolutions, right? That's the job of SwiftUI. As it is, SwiftUI downloads the image, and looks at it as if it was designed to be shown at the full pixel size, 1200 pixels high, rather than in our case, a 3X device here, 400 points high. And so it looked much bigger than our screen, and it's gonna look a bit blurry too. You know, text and pictures, for example, would, photos would look pretty grim. To fix this, we can tell SwiftUI, actually, this picture was designed to be used at 3X scale. So we'll do scale three. And that's the equivalent of putting it into the 3x box in our asset catalog. When it downloads a 1200 high image, it'll make it 3x scale, and it'll show it now at 400 points high, a much more sensible size for this kind of screen. And if you want precise size, go for it. I'll take the scale away and instead say, uh, I want a frame with width 200, height 200. And run the code again. And as you can see, it doesn't work, <laughs> which I don't think will surprise you because it wouldn't work with a regular image either, never mind an async image. So you might think, okay, fine, I know the fix here. Um, I've got to make my image resizable. So I'll just do resizable and then build the code. And now it won't work at all. It's actually worse. This is worse. It's, it's not even compiling the code anymore. The modifiers we're applying here don't apply to the image that get downloaded. They get applied to the async image view. SwiftUI can't apply them to the, the image view. It doesn't know, it's not possible. It doesn't know what it exists yet. It hasn't even downloaded it. It can't make the thing have a, a resizable behavior because it hasn't got any images yet. It hasn't fetched it yet. And so what we're saying here doesn't make sense. We are instead applying modifiers like frame, we're trying to apply resizable to like a, a wrapper around the image as opposed to the image itself. And that wrapper of course is async image. And this will ultimately contain the loaded image all being well, whatever we fetched from the internet must be loaded here, but it can also contain a placeholder view that's shown in the meantime while the image is loading. Now if you look, you can actually see it in our app. You press command R and go to the simulator, you'll see this little gray box there, bang, before our picture snaps in. That gray box, which is exactly 200 by 200, by the way, as requested, that's our placeholder. And then when the final thing loads, it'll be replaced and shown full screen. So again, the modifiers we try and apply here after this uh, AC image, they belong to the async image, not to the image inside it, to the whole container. To adjust the image itself we get loaded, 
we've got to use a more advanced form of async image. And it'll pass us the final image when it's ready. I've downloaded it, it's ready to show. Here's what I plan to show. What do you want to do with it? And we can then go ahead and customize it as needed. As a bonus, we get a second closure to run that will customize the placeholder we want. For example, we could make the finished image view both resizable and scaled to fit. And then we'll add a, a placeholder of color.red so you can see it more clearly when you're learning. So we'll say AC image da 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 image in. Give me the image you have. And this is already a 50 white image for us to work with. So we can just say image dot resizable dot scale to fit. And that's fine. Then we'll attach a placeholder. And we'll do color dot red. And now remove resizable from here, it doesn't work, and place the frame on the async image again. Now, as you know, a resizable image and color.red both automatically take up all the available space, which means our frame modifier should now work correctly. Let's find out. I'll press run again. There's a red and there's a logo. So now you can more clearly see our placeholder view is this thing here, wherever you want it to be. Um, and then once it loads the image, it puts it in here. It's now resizable and scaled to fit. That's why it appears correctly inside our frame. Now the placeholder view can be whatever you want, right? Color.red's not a great placeholder view. For example, we could say, um, I want a little activity spinner, a little spinner because I'm doing stuff. And 50Y is just one line of code. We just say progress view, just that. And now I'll get a little spinner when it's loading the image. And you hopefully see it now. There you go, bang. It's small, but it's nice. If you want complete control over your remote image, there's a third way of making async image, which tells us whether the image was loaded or hit an error or hasn't finished yet. So there's three phases of image loading. Success, image, failure, error, or still in progress, unknown basically. This is particularly useful for times when you want to show some kind of custom view for when a download fails. Like if the URL is not exist or the uh, the user is offline or who knows what. To do this, we're going to say, uh, let's try and load bad.ping, which does not exist. Uh, we're gonna say there's a phase coming in. Which phase of loading are we currently in? And if we can do, if the image equals phase dot image, if we can read the image, it means succeeded, we've got an image, great, image, resizable, scale to fit, like before. If we're still here, it means there is no image. Uh, is phase dot error not equal to nil? We've, there's an error here somewhere. We'll do text. There was an error loading the image. And all other cases, i.e. it's still loading, we'll do our progress view. And again, I'll attach a frame with 200 height, 200. So this is a bad URL. Bad.ping does not exist on my server. That will not work correctly. When I press Command R, it will now hopefully show the text, spinner, and then bang, the text below saying it didn't work. So you'd show a placeholder thing, a little X sign, or who knows what, right? So it'll show an image if it can, if it has got one downloaded. It'll show an error message if the download failed for any reason. But in all of the cases, if it's still in progress, hasn't started yet, who knows what, it'll show that spinning activity indicator.